Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 25th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see British Columbia is here. We got Washington, Oregon off to the right, and you can see our next system. It is now moving across the Gulf of Alaska, and this is going to come roaring in as we go through tomorrow night. We're going to take a look at those details, and we're going to take a look at the extended forecast. As always, we're also going to take a look at the short term and see how much we're going to warm up as we go through the day today and tomorrow. It's been pretty chilly and cloudy. We got near some record low high temperatures temperatures here and I think we broke a few of those. Uh, Seattle only hit what 59 degrees a couple days ago. Just uh, very fall-like conditions across much of the region. So taking a look at the visible satellite imagery here and then this turns to infrared satellite imagery as we go through the nighttime hours. We can see we're pretty socked in for a lot of areas yesterday. There were a few sun breaks to be had. Well, places like Seattle and a lot of the Cascades and down to the Willamette Valley did not break out too much. You see we went through the overnight hours. We come out into this morning and you can see eastern Washington, a lot of the Willamette Valley and the sun's starting to shine across the southwest BC a bit. Western Washington and even some of the coastal areas. Look at the Oregon coast, kind of widespread clear there as well we go right now and then uh, check out this uh this latest update here that we are not under the thunderstorm watch here today this on this line here it looks like oh and they updated it okay they corrected their error so yeah no thunderstorms expected today maybe boise east maybe including butte montana there so heads up for that see some severe weather there across from the four corners region and on the utah colorado border but no threat here across the pacific northwest at least not today uh, we'll take a look at that next system though here in a moment now you can see day two and then day three right there so nothing included just yet but we do have a little Bit, bit of a thunderstorm potential with that next system. So only 62 degrees yesterday at Seattle. The average high is 77, so 15 degrees below average. Another 34 hundredths of inch of rain in the bucket. We are well above average. 1.52 inches of rain for the month of August, and we might get a little bit more here coming up. So yep, we're already above. So that's a good thing there, right? We take a look at Bellingham, 62 degrees there yesterday. Also, they have a try 72, so 10 degrees below normal. Look at this rain, 1.19 inches, putting Bellingham up over two inches for the month. So well above average, almost double the amount. Taking a look at the European. So I want to show you today, again, we're breaking out a little bit. You might have a, a decent day out there for some areas, but then we got the next system rolling in here. But we could warm up a bit here again Monday before the system gets here for places like Washington and Oregon. Of course, Western British Columbia and Vancouver Island, you guys are going to be getting this uh, precipitation and this cloud cover much earlier. In fact, you're not going to get much of a break of it as we go through tonight and into tomorrow morning. And then you can see the precipitation coming across the area. Pretty progressive system starts to blast down across Washington might clip portions of northern Oregon, but then quickly gets out and we start to rebuild a ridge in the wake of that system. And then I kind of turn my eyes out here at a cutoff low that gets left behind out over the Pacific Ocean. It's been showing uh, some of the track of this low has been showing up into Oregon or northern California. And sometimes these can spin thunderstorms back up across the mountainous regions and even back out across the lower terrain. It's still purely a fantasy forecast as of right now. Models have a notoriously difficult time forecasting and uh, predicting their motion. So if we take a look at total precipitation in inches on the North American model, this is just kind of wrap up stuff, but I want to show you the next frontal system. Here it goes. You can see the timing of this across Vancouver Island as we go through the day tomorrow. So about 10 a.m. There's 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 5 p.m. right here. Just starting to clip the northwest Washington coast. And you can see in the overnight hours and Tuesday morning, it starts to swing through. And it brings, you know what, it, we're talking about maybe a quarter of an inch for Seattle, lesser amounts for Portland, but higher amounts across the higher terrain, of course, in the Olympic Mountains as well, Washington coast. And then that one swings through then we're going to start to warm up again and summer is going to try to make a reappearance here across the Pacific Northwest. So looking at the lightning flash density potential, this is the 12Z high resolution rapid refresh run. So nothing to worry about until we get into about Monday morning. You see maybe a couple of lightning strikes across Vancouver Island and some of Southwest BC. And as we go through Monday evening, you can't roll one out on the Washington coast and maybe one for the Northwest interior, mainly North of Seattle here. But again, it should be kind of the one lightning strike and done and pretty progressive system will be getting out of our hair as we go through the day Tuesday. This is the European. Let's just play through this really quickly. You can kind of see it just blink and you miss it, but it shows it mainly across British Columbia, maybe at the slightest chance across some of Washington here, but barely worth mentioning here. It would be kind of the one strike and done uh, variety. 
So taking a look at 925 millibars, this is just off the surface. I kind of want to show you the timing here because we do have a nice onshore flow coming with this next system. You can see the frontal system rolling and you can see what is this about Monday late afternoon, evening. You can see the wind start to flow through the gorge here up into the Puget Sound. Start down the Strait of Juan de Fuca as we go through Monday night into Tuesday morning. Pretty strong westerly surge down the Strait of Georgia there kind of right parallel there with uh, Vancouver Island. You can see strong westerlies racing across some of the east slopes of the Cascades of Washington and portions of Oregon here as we go through the day Tuesday. So heads up for that. And you can see some strong winds moving down the coastal areas here as well. So a, a nice pressure gradient setting up <clears throat> with that system will bring a strong onshore flow with it. And then we're going to warm up behind that. So looking at two meter temperature for today, this is the North American model. The GFS has even warmer, but check it out. You know, some 70s maybe returning to some of the Puget Sound and you can see some 70s and uh, mid 70s maybe upper 70s there for the Willamette Valley the NAM might be underdoing that a little bit here then we go on into Monday and so uh, before the frontal system gets here check it out warm it up quite nicely might even be a little bit above average for Seattle and some areas in Willamette Valley in eastern Washington not warming up to, you know not an extreme warm up here but but it's not bad you know it's definitely you'll notice the warmth over the last few days let's just put it that way then we go to tuesday afternoon and you'll be able to feel again a drop in those temperatures as that system is swinging through and bringing a strong onshore flow so taking a look at the european this is 500 millibar heights there goes that system that brought us our very cool weather the next one the much more progressive system again as we roll through monday night into tuesday swings through and then we start to build this ridge and that's where summer may try to make a reappearance as we end up the month of august on in through early september and there's that cutoff low out there that i've been talking about again models are gonna have a difficult time with that so we'll be watching that closely over the next few days purely a fantasy forecast right now and where this is going to go and just how strong it will be but I also want to do this. Let's back out a little bit here. We're going to go to Oceanic and we're going to go to the Northeast view. And I'm going to show something here. We're going to go to upper temperature and we're going to go to the GFS and we're going to go to 500 millibars because I want to show you something here. We're going to back this all the way up and we're going to try to see where that cutoff low comes from. There goes our upper level load there. This comes from this next progressive system here. And it looks like this cutoff low, that's the bugger right there. It's associated with this polar low here. And you can kind of see that swinging through and just kind of bob and weave. It's lost out here. It's cut off from its parent. Its parent has just left it behind. It's just left to fend for itself out there. And it's just bobbing and weaving and spinning and doesn't know what to do. Then eventually tries to get caught up a little bit in the westerlies here and then makes its way towards the coastal areas. And then you can see it just, again, lost and kind of cut off again from the main steering flow. Moves across Northern California here. But sometimes these can spawn some defluent flow aloft on the north side of them and they can bring thunderstorm activity with them as well. So we'll watch it closely. It's purely a fantasy forecast. I wouldn't be surprised if you know this thing could go completely away or it could stay down further south California. But it's just something fun to watch to the extended forecast. I like looking at these little features if you can't tell. And another way to look at that here is 500 millibar heights and cyclonic relative vorticity. So if we put that into motion, there goes our system. Here goes the next frontal system, progressive one that's going to cool us down, especially for Tuesday. And then we start to bounce back. But you can see that cutoff low. There he is, spinning right here. And if you look here, you can kind of see it spread some of this activity back up maybe across Oregon some of that thunderstorm activity maybe Sierra Nevada north maybe eastern Oregon Cascades of Oregon under the gun there as that system kind of flows back across the region maybe some of that would make its way into Washington and again you can imagine if the models are wrong and this comes a bit further north that would open up much of the Pacific Northwest to some of that action but purely a fantasy forecast right now do not expect that to happen yet and if we look at average min temperature um departure from average the overnight lows we've been significantly warm here across the pacific northwest as you can see however the other side of that coin is that the temperature departure from average from the maximum temperatures we have now look at that across western washington we've now been below average for some areas and look at some of the cascades and the west slopes of the cascades for oregon actually substantially below normal there as far as the maximum temperatures are concerned for the month of august you can see the first through the 24th shown there and this is the mean temperature and you can see we are still above average, but we've definitely knocked down uh, the dramatic um, above average temperature conditions here across the area. So looking at the GFS, look at today for Seattle, 75 degrees, 80 degrees for Monday. Then we drop back down Tuesday, Wednesday, and we start to climb back up here and maybe return to some summer light conditions as we go towards the end of the month. I've said that several times already. Six to 10 day temperature outlook above average makes sense, right, with the ridge building. And is that a little bit of a sign of that upper level low there on the Climate Prediction Center above average precipitation there into Oregon? Might be. 
There's an 8 to 14 day below average across a lot of the West Coast as well. And there's the precipitation outlook again, maybe that upper level low hanging out there. Who knows? We'll see. Um, also, I showed this yesterday just in case you missed it, but you can see that the U.S. seasonal drought outlook actually shows drought removal likely. If you look to the bottom right there, you can see the green. You can see across a lot of Washington, Oregon, drought removal is likely as we go on in through November 30th, all the way out through some of the fall portions of the year coming up and you can see drought remove uh, drought remains but improves here across some of the east slopes of the cascades of washington so that, that's beneficial here you know the la niñas can be notoriously wet across the pacific northwest so I, I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility by any stretch of the imagination so anyway there comes our next system coming across the gulf of alaska then we're going to warm up after that we'll watch that cut off low on a daily basis as well but anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.